The integrated questions are distinct in a way, so the note-taking is kind of different for each question. So let's take a look at what the integrated questions look like and how to take notes for each question. The first integrated question, question 2, is usually about a notice or an announcement on a campus environment. You'll read an announcement and then listen to two students, male and female, talk about it. First tip, the reading is fairly short and you will be given about 45 seconds to read. The time given is more than enough for you to read the passage and understand what the topic of the lecture is. But while practicing, try to read and take notes within 30 seconds as this can help you with time management when you take the real test. Second tip, in this question, the audio will include a conversation between two students, male and female. So the best way is to first, Take the part of the scratch paper you're going to use for this question. And second, draw a line to divide it into two parts. And third, write M and F on top of each part so that when you listen to the conversation, you can take notes along with the dialogue. Now, let's take a look at the first integrated question you can take at tofobank.com. Read the following text and listen to the conversation that follows it. Then answer the question. So um, the reading passage that I got was about suspending the sale of omelets. So what I wrote down were the main key points that I could use while speaking. So the first keyword was cafeteria because the cafeteria suspended it. So they removed the omelet from the breakfast menu, right? So I tried to shorten the words as much as I could, but in a way that I could understand it. So it was caused by avian flu and which led to hardship in getting eggs and they are going to sell it as soon as condition recovers. So this, is the, this was the whole reading passage. I tried to take a keyword out of every sentence but it was like more than a keyword. There were two or three, three keywords for each sentence. So in this way, my note taken for the reading passage is complete but while I'm speaking for my answer, I'm gonna just take the important parts from the note-taking that I did and then use them to answer my question. Dialogue. I don't like the school's decision. Isn't it understandable? I mean, every restaurant is having hardships in getting eggs these days. I get your point. But I think the real problem is the price of other breakfast menu options. The omelet was the only food that was cheap enough for us to eat in the cafeteria every day. They should have at least added more menu options with similar prices or lowered the price of other breakfast meals. I'm pretty sure that the school knows there are students who have financial difficulties. Hmm. At least we have cheaper dinner menu options. We can still enjoy our dinner at a reasonable price. That's another thing that I don't like. It simply means the school can actually provide cheap menu options for our breakfasts, too. The only reason they don't serve cheap meals for breakfast is that the profits aren't as high as dinner time, since students do not frequently use the cafeteria in the morning. This is totally wrong. The school should serve cheaper meals in the morning, too, until they are able to sell the omelets again. I mean, students' welfare should be first. Yeah, I agree. I understand your point. Probably the school will provide a solution in the near future. I hope so. I have a lot of places to spend my money. 
omelette was the only cheap menu that students could eat. Then the man adds supporting reasons or supporting solutions, which is that they could have added more menus of the similar price or lowered the price of the menus that are already existing in the cafeteria. And then this is a detail that I wrote because I had time, but it's like, the detail of a detail so even if you don't mention this part in the answer it's not really gonna matter but the what the man said was that there are many students that are facing financial difficulties so it would be better if the university takes care of them and then the hint for the second reason of the man comes from the woman where she says that at least they have cheap dinner then the man says that he doesn't like that they have cheap dinner. This is because it means they can provide cheap menu in the breakfast as well. But they don't. Why? Because it's because they have low profits and students, this is an X, don't use cafeteria in the morning. And then this is another solution that the man says that the university could have served cheap menus in morning as well. And this is also an extra detail, which is that students' welfare should be the first thing in the university's mind. And there are many other places that he needs to spend money on. This is, this is not really relevant to the opinion he gives. But so this is how the man finishes his um, dialogue, the opinion and his reasons. And when you note take like this, you can see the development of the dialogue like how the man says something and then supports it using reasons and then gives solutions to what he suggested. So in this way, you can clearly see all the keywords. So when you're speaking and you're answering the question, you can just look at the keywords and then fit them in your sentences that you make. So for example, if I were to answer, I would say, the university is going to suspend the sale of omelette and they're going to remove it from the breakfast menu. However, the man does not like it because firstly, he says that the real problem is the price of other menus because omelette was the only one that was cheap enough. So they, could, they should have added more menus or lowered the price. And then moving on to the second reason why the man doesn't like this, it's because they provide cheap menus in the dinner but they don't in the breakfast because of low profits so they should serve cheap menus in the morning as well so this is how your answer develops so when you have good note-taking skills it becomes easier to answer the question so moving on to question three the second integrated question question three is about an academic topic you will read a short passage about an academic topic for 45 seconds. You will then listen to a short lecture on this topic given by a professor. After the lecture is finished, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your answer and one minute to speak. For this type of question, explaining the concept or the term mentioned in the passage is important. Now, let's take a look at a sample question. Read a passage from a business textbook and listen to the lecture that follows. Then answer the question. I think I should give you a little help in understanding what the textbook is saying, since many of you won't be familiar with the concept of desire marketing. Desire marketing is simply a marketing strategy that uses people's desires. A lot of people want to buy expensive products because they usually have higher qualities and are fancier than cheaper ones. 
Also, this desire grows if there is a product that matches one's taste. For instance, lots of warehouse discount stores place luxury items at the front of their display corners. To name a few, items such as yachts and expensive motorcycles. They also sell expensive watches and jewelry, unlike the past warehouse stores. As they display such expensive items comprehensively, they are able to provoke the desire of customers. Customers easily get lured by the optical attractions of the items, and this type of marketing increases the profit of those stores. This is how desire marketing works. Okay, so the topic given in the reading passage was desire marketing, and I tried to take note of the keywords just as I did in the previous question. So the main keyword or the first sentence was that desire marketing is taking advantage of consumer's desire. This is all you need really to answer the question. You first explain what desire marketing is by saying that it's uh, taking advantage of consumers' desires, and then you move on to what the lecture said about desire marketing. So moving on to the lecture, this is where the lecture starts. So it's using people's desire to buy expensive products because, because is shown by this arrow, because ex expensive products have high quality. And then moving on to the next part, this desire grows when they match the taste. Like this looks like a test, but okay. As long as you understand what you wrote, as long as I understand what I wrote, I wrote taste. So this desire grows when the object matches the taste of the consumers. And the example given, this is important. The example given was warehouse discount stores. So they show luxury items at the front such as this this and this and due to this they are able to provoke the desire of customers so this is what was mentioned in the reading passage that this could be like an important sentence that you could connect with the reading passage so while they're lured by the attractions the companies gain profit so this is how the lecture developed and when you think about how you would answer this question, so first, in the first sentence, you would explain what the reading passage is, is or was saying, desire marketing is taking advantage of consumers' desires. And what the professor says in the lecture is that people buy ex expensive products because of high quality, and this desire grows when the object matches the taste of the consumers. And he gives an example of warehouse discount stores that show luxury items at the front of the store, such as this, this, and this. And due to this, they are able to provoke the desire of customers and gain profit. So this is how your answer would go, and it could be a model answer. Now, let's go to the final question, question 4. The final speaking question is also about an academic topic, but this time, it'll be longer than the previous question, but without any passage to read. It goes straight to the professor's lecture, and the lecture is about 1 to 2 minutes long. And here comes the third tip. The tip for this question is summarizing. Do not add ideas from your personal knowledge. Focus only on what you have heard in the lecture. This question is not about how much you know about a certain topic, but rather to see how well you understand the question and summarize it. So with this tip in mind, let's try the final question with me. Listen to part of a lecture and then answer the question. Some animals have superior structural functions like humans. For example, meerkats. Most of you might have seen meerkats in the zoo. The meerkat is an animal that is also known as the surricate. These creatures are small mammals, where a fully grown meerkat only grows to a height of 20 centimeters. As meerkats are small animals, they easily become prey to other carnivores. As a result, 
Meerkats have developed their own survival techniques. So today, we are going to learn about the survival skills of these meerkats. Hmm, you might think that animals are not smart enough to be on sentry duty. But you know what? Meerkats have sentries. Fascinating, isn't it? Meerkats choose a certain member from their group to play the role as sentries. They do this because of their unique hunting traits. Meerkats eat bugs that live underground. They need to drive their heads into the ground while they hunt. This makes them extremely vulnerable to their potential predators. So the sentry enables meerkats to always keep an eye on their predators. Whenever this sentry finds a predator, it alerts the group and the group hides. Their sentry system is highly systematic compared to other animals. One example of this is that experienced meerkats take sentry duties twice as much as those with less experience. Moreover, meerkats live in underground caves. As these animals live underground, they are safe from ground-dwelling beasts and threats approaching from above. Meanwhile, they are able to easily acquire food by hunting animals that live underground, such as bugs and worms. So, the lecture was about meerkats. To be specific, it was about the survival techniques of meerkats. So, the professor first mentions meerkats and tells details about what this animal looks like, its size, and it's a mammal, and it becomes prey. And then he moves on to survival techniques. And he says, today we're going to talk about the survival techniques of meerkats. And through this sentence, you can tell that the topic of this lecture is the survival techniques that meerkats use. So the first topic that comes up is sentry duty. And the tip I would give for this question is to write down as many details as you can so that later on when you're, when you're given 20 seconds to prepare, you can organize the details and you know think about it, what detail you're gonna put in your answer and what you're gonna ignore. So what you're gonna ignore is the minor details that isn't necessary in the answer. For example, the description of meerkats. This part comes before the professor says that he's gonna talk about survival techniques, so it's not really relevant to the topic. So moving on to the first point, he talks about sentry duty, and there are details about what sentry duty is, and how meerkats do this, why they do this, and then he moves on to the second point, and in the lecture, while it isn't mentioned that he's gonna move on to the like, he doesn't really say secondly or the second survival technique, but how you can know is that while he was talking about sentries, he suddenly talks about underground caves. So with this transition, you can tell or you can assume that the professor has moved on to the second point. And when you finish, when you're finished with the note taking, you can organize it, like underline what the important points are, and then answer the question. So for me, I think that the meerkats, obviously, this is an important keyword, survival techniques, and the subtopics, the points, the first one is sentry duty, and the second one is underground caves. And after that comes the detail. So in detail, it would be like, sentries have unique hunting traits, and this and that, and due to this, they are vulnerable, which is why they need sentries to keep an eye on predators so that they can hide. And moving on to the second point, they live in underground caves. Why? Because it is safe and also it is easy to find food. So with this underlining, you can think about what you're going to talk about in your answer and then make up your answer as you go while keeping these points in mind. So these are the know-hows and tips for the TOEFL speaking integrated questions. Note-taking is the key to get a high score, and in order to do it well, what you need is practice and more practice. To summarize, first, Try to finish the reading passage within 30 seconds and use the rest of the time to organize the information in your head. Second, draw a line or categorize while taking notes. And third, do not include information from your personal knowledge. Focus only on what you have heard. 
Thank you to all those still watching. Give it a like if it helped and subscribe for more TOEFL related content. Bye.